thank you uh, for attending um, uh, in this presentation. My name is Fernando Ongoli from the Irish Universities Association. I'm a uh, student uh, associate intern in the Enhancing Digital Teaching and Learning uh, in Irish Universities project. So uh, I'll be making a presentation on uh, student staff partnership, um, which is a case from our student interns where I am part of the internship. So first, um, I want to start by just um, giving you a brief overview of our internship model. So in the project, when the project started, we never had student interns and um, there were just staff working in the various universities, the partner universities. Um, and uh, sometimes in 2019, actually in November, uh, there was a need of hiring a student associate intern with the core objective of the student intern bringing uh, student voices uh, to the project and uh, being actively involved in the creation of digital resources to support online teaching and learning. Uh, with the success of uh, involving this one intern, then there was this urge and this, um, um, you know, out of the importance and the value that the intern brought uh, to the project, then the, there was a need to expand um, the internship model for uh, every partner university to have uh, at least uh, an intern working with a member of staff. So the internship um, is based on uh, this structure whereby the student has to be currently enrolled, an actively enrolled student, but not a student who has, you know, uh, who completed um, um, uh, college and the students were working 15 hours per week, which is 60 hours per week flexibly per month, I mean 60 hours per month flexibly, because there are some months that are very heavy for students and there are some months that are light. So depending on, on how the college timetable looks like, there was that kind of flexibility. And there was a payment uh, of 13.91 uh, euros per hour. And each university had at least one intern and there are some partner universities that had even more than uh, uh, one intern in their um, uh, um, in their local university. And the interns worked collaboratively with the project staff. And also we saw this ad where uh, oh, there was a growth of this collaboration uh, between um, interns. So uh, the, just giving you the structure in terms of uh, how the model um, uh, looked like, so at the Irish Universities Association, that's where the EDTL project is hosted. Then now there are these partner, uh, uh, there's, there's the eight partner universities that um, are under, uh, that, that the project is being implemented in. And every uh, university has a staff and has a uh, student intern. Uh, working with the staff collaboratively. And the, at the Irish Universities Association, at the project, the higher level of the project, we have a member of staff and also a student intern. So the, the, intern, the internship model started with an intern at the higher level. Then, you know, out of the work that this intern did back then in 2019, uh, uh, we saw it important to expand the scheme to the partner university. So uh, as you can see in 2019, we started with one uh, intern. And the reason why I'm projecting this screen is that so that you can just see the, 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 where the project has come from and the kind of uh, 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 diversity and you know, like the kind of interns that we had. Like this, the first intern was a postgraduate um, uh, student uh, with a background of journalism. So that they should just, it's, it's not, you know, we didn't only hire interns from technical, fields myself um, i'm an anthropologist and i'm in the school of business there was a diverse you know like a mix of undergraduate and uh, postgraduate and you know students from law medicine business like myself and anthropology digital marketing data science and and also we had like 14 um, uh, female students and and seven male students so there was all this kind of diversity because all these different groups of students bring in different perspectives and three international students and um, 18 local students. Myself, I'm an international student from Kenya. Uh, what uh, are we trying to do actually? Because the purpose of the internship was actually to for the students to create uh, digital teaching and learning resources that resonate with a student um, um, uh, perspective, just from their perspective and to support the staff and to work collaboratively with the staff. Then sometimes in 2020, we decided, okay, fine. Why can't we 
do an evaluation of the student internship scheme. And that's where this great idea of having a qualitative study to understand the, uh, uh, the, the student internship scheme came, came up and the core objective was just to understand the role of students as partners in digital teaching and learning. And specifically, we are looking at documenting how students contribute when they are engaged as active partners in the di digital teaching and learning space. And also just trying to understand the benefits, um, uh, you know, like uh, um, uh, uh, how students benefit when they are actively engaged in the student partnership um, uh, uh, space in you know, digital and learning. And also as a bonus, like we were trying to understand the value that the project added to our uh, student intern. So why was this important or why is this important? So the first thing is that this, the project has been running like for quite a long time and um, uh, we had a lot of informal lessons. So it was important that these lessons are documented so that they can be referred to in the future. And just so that we can have, you know, future user-centered approaches to teaching and learning you know, because more often, you know, we design programs for students without involving them. And this was very important. It's a program where there's a project where students are creating resources for themselves and they are being involved actively. And how can we transfer these skills to other projects and to other areas where we involve students? So I will um, invite uh, two uh, of my fellow interns, uh, uh, Katharina Katz and uh, Schneid Mooney, just to share their um, um, experience. Uh, uh, over to you, um, uh, Schneid. Okay, Schneid, uh, thank you uh, very much for accepting to be part of this uh, panel. So um, welcome to ALT uh, 2022. Um, on the screen. So um, I, I would like you to share with us your, your just your overall experience as a student intern in the project, just trying to tell us uh, what are some of the things that you know you collaborated um, on with staff? How did you collaborate with the staff? Like what worked, what did not work? And what, what would be the barriers or what were some of the barriers of, um, you know, you as a student engaging with staff or what will be the like the barriers of engaging uh, with with staff and just what work generally? Okay, yeah. So I was student associate intern for the uh, Irish University Association's enhancing digital teaching and learning project this year in uh, Dublin City University in Ireland. So the way it worked, my collaboration with staff, I mainly worked with the teaching enhancement unit in DCU. And I worked with uh, Rob Lenny and Suzanne Stone mainly. And so we would have a meeting every week and we would discuss kind of goals for the week and looking at different initiatives that the teaching and health unit had either already started or were looking to start during the year. So some of the things that we worked on, we did a project called DC Digitown. So this was several kind of informal weekly learning sessions where students could come online uh, in this space called uh, Gather, which had like a sort of uh, pixelated feel as well, some like sort of Zoom video call features. And we would uh, go through different uh, things to look at, like how to use Excel or how to make use like videos in uh, like lectures and assign content, that sort of thing. Uh, some of the other things we did, um, we did uh, weekly two, uh, tips in the Students' Union newsletter for the uh, Virtual, our virtual learning environment service loop or Moodle. Uh, continue the Digitown project by creating an Instagram for it where we posted uh, twice tips and engaged students through that. And we've also been working on our digital skills hub repository site, which is called digiskills.ie, uh, which I, I, based off a, a spreadsheet kind of produced by all the staff in the teaching enhancement unit, I did a WordPress site and populated post, and it's aimed at both students and staff, give them resources under different digital competencies that uh, work for both students and staff and are aimed at different people. So I think what worked is, um, I think um, stuff like uh, creating the Instagram for the Digitown project really worked because that reached out to students where they were kind of on like Instagram was probably the most used social media for student stuff. So I felt we were able to engage with students really directly that way. And I really enjoyed the experience of being a student and working with staff. Often I think one of the barriers can be that it can feel intimidating to give recommendations to staff because you kind of on you don't have that much insight as a student, but you have more insight than you think. And I think I was able 
to realize that I had so much more to learn about digital learning than I thought I did because sometimes you can think you know everything already but there's actually so much more to learn. Sometimes what could be difficult is especially when we were doing the Digi10 sessions we did both online and in person. Online didn't like there would usually be I think about a max of about seven people sometimes more around three or four. We get a lot of the sessions and these people would usually be coming back every week and we like let's say mature students and international students who I think got a lot out but we kind of struggled to uh, bring more students into it because I think sometimes it can be hard to convince students to extracurricularly like seek out things that influence their learning so it kind of when we did I, I found the online sessions were better than the in-person sessions it was easier to get people to catch up onto the online sessions which yeah it, it can be like difficult to kind of get students who think they already know what they're doing like like third or final years to like engage in developing their digital skills but I think it's a really important thing I think as, as well as eventually one of the barriers can be student feeling nervous for giving recommendations or stuff as an intern sometimes I would find it difficult to kind of align my schedule so I could work consistently on projects and I would have loved to have had more time to meet with other interns but I think in general I really enjoyed working as like an intern I really felt like my opinion was valued by the staff and I felt like I got to do a lot learn a lot about building websites working on in and building a following there and I got to give some of the Digitown sessions um, I got to lead some of them myself and present some of them myself it was a really valuable experience getting to explain digital learning content to other students because I felt like I learned more about them while I was teaching them to other people so I, I think yeah it was great and I, I really enjoyed being a part of the ED enhancing digital teaching and learning project over this last year <laughs> Sorry, uh, I think I was on mute. So thank you. So just to 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 like to wrap up, um, and if you were to recommend or to give recommendations, what would be some of the recommendations that uh, you will you know give out on you know the best ways of engaging with students as partners, uh, you know, based on the experiences that you have learned from the project. Yeah. Well, I think. Um, I guess some of the recommendations I would give is definitely kind of reach to students as early as possible in the year to see if they're interested in being involved in like initiatives like this. I know the Enhancing Digital Teaching and Learning Initiative is sort of wrapping up now, but I definitely think having more initiatives like this, either by the Irish University Associations or by the individual universities would be a really good thing because like I said, I think people don't realize how much they have to learn. And I think people are enthusiastic to, to learn more about these things. And yeah, so I suppose kind of give, bring up more, like create more of these initiatives, reach out to students early and often and kind of keep checking back and keep recruiting more people. And yeah, just kind of, I think, I think students are more interested sometimes than people might think. So kind of just don't be afraid to kind of keep developing those initiatives and give them opportunities to develop their skills when staff and students are working together. And I think students will gain a lot from that and so will staff. If that makes sense. <laughs> okay, okay. So thank you very much uh, for your um, uh, uh, your insights. Um, yeah, thanks. Okay, thank you, uh, Kathy, for joining us in Alt 2022, uh, virtually from Minut. Ireland. Yeah, Ireland. well, in, in Leakslip, close to Minut. Okay, thank you. So Kathy, um, you you are part of the like the first batch of the interns and who served like for a really long time in the project. So can you tell us about your experience in the project, mostly around um, what were your roles and um, like um, you know how did things work out? How did you collaborate with the staff and how how was it like just generally in terms of um, uh, uh, what what were the barriers and what are some of the things that facilitated the student staff partnership? Okay, so um, yeah, so I'd love to talk a little bit about that. It's been, I think, like two years now since I was the um, student intern, the student Miss Minu student associate intern from the University of Maynooth, um, which was the role that I participated in the EDTL Enhanced Digital Teaching and Learning Project, which you know encompassed also universities beyond Maynooth. Um, so I was kind of like the representative or one of the student representatives from Minuth University and with me there were um, a few other interns as well from Minuth University. 
So um, we started off, um, I think we were two uh, interns from Minuth University and then a third one joined us um, from a different kind of um, department or different educational um, backgrounds than um, you know, the first two interns were. And I was also, you know, being the first intern, I came from, you know, anthropology. So I came very much from a social science kind of background. And the second intern who, you know, joined quite, you know, with me at the same time, she came from a business background. So there was throughout the whole, um, you know, year that we worked as the student interns, part of the ETL project, there were kind of, you know, and there was an insurance or kind of like a strive towards having students from different educational backgrounds as well. So we had, you know, um, at one point we had a fourth student intern also joining us um, who was a little bit younger than us. So like I was a postgraduate student, but um, the fourth student intern who joined was, a, um, I think, first year um, IT student, uh, IT and mathematics students so are also very different than, of course, like social science and also different than business. Um, so as part of the student staff partnership at Minuth University, we were collaborating closely throughout the year um, with um, especially the project lead, um, who was Morag, who was also from Minuth University, and she was situated in, you know, kind of agile education. Um, so we kind of, she was our first point of contact. So we had like weekly meetings with her, of course, also when we had, you know, when there were off days or bank holidays or, you know, off times during the academic year, um, we didn't have meetings. So it was really, really nice as a student to also kind of um, have some safety, some, you know, around working hours, um, you know, from the academic timetable that, you know, both students and staff kind of adhere to as also as part of the project. Um, yeah, so we had weekly meetings. We had a Microsoft Teams page as well. Um, what I didn't say in the beginning is that the year that I was a student intern was during the, you know, COVID pandemic or the kind of like first year of the um, you know, kind of working remotely. So we used a lot of digital tools, which I guess like made sense also in context of our project, the Enhancing Digital Teaching and Learning Project. So we ourselves kind of used a lot of digital tools to collaborate, such as um, we had like a WhatsApp group, we had like a Microsoft Teams group, as I was mentioning, the meetings also, because we couldn't meet in person, <clears throat> were online as well. So we actually only met in person the first time um, I think after that year, always like towards the end of the project, that was the first time kind of where we had an event together in person at Minuth University. Um, so yeah, most of the meetings were remotely also through Microsoft Teams. Um, we used a lot um, the Microsoft Teams group because like that was kind of our platform or our shared space where we kind of shared a lot of the work that we've been doing um, you know, quick questions that we had um i was involved very much also in the instagram team as part of you know minuth university where we did some campaigns together with the new students union but also as part of the wider edtl team so we were kind of also um a few other students from other universities other student interns we met also in addition to the weekly meetings with our you know local kind of project leads we set up um another microsoft teams group and another kind of reoccurring series of meetings um, with the Instagram team where we met with, you know, students, whoever wanted to join as part of the ETL team, um, where we met and developed kind of content um, for the, you know, what we're going to post the next week um, on the ETL channel, which didn't only concern, you know, Minuth University, but also drew attention to, you know, a series kind of campaigns or support services in other um, universities, um, such as you know, like in Cork, for example, or, um, you know, other Irish universities who are our partners. Um, yeah, so that was kind of the, that were kind of the main things that I was involved in, in kind of working together with other student interns at Minuth um, and as part of the Instagram team in Minuth and, uh, and beyond Minuth. But also then there was the option, which I think was really great to have the option, but also not be kind of forced to join, um, which were these kind of wider EDTL meetings from, you know, other project leads from the other university partners um, that were part of the EDTL project. And they were usually steered and kind of facilitated and hosted by Sharon, um, you know, who was, who was kind of like the main director of the project or the main person responsible for that project. So I joined them a couple of times and, you know, what we did there was update, you know, other members from other universities 
um, what's what's going on in Minut, what what we've been doing, you know, as part of the Instagram team. So that was always nice to kind of also have a space there to kind of share our voice and come with questions and so on to like the wider team. But we were always reminded when we were sent out the meeting invitations for these wider meetings that you know we didn't we weren't expected to be part of these wider meetings. So like each student in turn was invited and very much welcomed to these meetings. And it was great for me to kind of learn about what's going on in these other universities as well, right? Because it was really interesting then to kind of bring that back to our university or to the Instagram team and kind of like um, use that to create more contact, uh, content or to steer our conversations. Um, so it was really a good opportunity to take part, but also nice not to be forced to do that. Um, yeah, do you have any any other questions? Yeah. Maybe I'm, I'm out maybe, of town. Maybe, maybe just, uh, 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 just just a brief like 30 seconds, like what out of your experience in the project, like what will you recommend as um, uh, the best way of involving students as partners, you know, trying to work with uh, with staff, like what would be your recommendation? Just just 30 seconds. Yeah, the importance of dialogue, for example, is something that's, you know, for me at the core um, you know, making sure that students, whenever you have these weekly check-in meetings or however you want to structure it, do have a space to also come with questions um, and also feel safe to kind of express their ideas. You know, students might be a little bit, you know, still caught in the dynamic of looking up to, you know, staff partners. Um, so it's very, very helpful to be kind of encouraged to come even with you know, ideas that aren't fully developed and seek more, ad seek advice from staff as well, but also, you know, kind of be encouraged not to, not to be, yeah, like perfect yet, but also not to not seek advice, to so be actively asked and reached out to as well, and um, to kind of come with, you know, what, what's there yet or what they feel like they would like to do. Um, that's a dialogue, is something that's at the core, I think, in partnership. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Kathy, and uh, wish you all the best uh, over there in Maynooth. You too, thank you. So thank you. Um, thank you, Kathy and uh, Schneid for uh, that wonderful sharing of your experience. So we'll get back to our presentation. And as I said, um, the we interviewed both staff and students um, to understand these kind of experiences that they had partnering uh, within, within the partnership of student and staff. And I'm just going to conclude my presentation by sharing the staff experiences. Uh, what did the staff think about the, um, um, uh, the student staff partnership and the internship model? So uh, generally, we found out that you know staff appreciated the value that this this internship brought um, uh, to the project, and there was greater emphasis on the authenticity that it brought. This authenticity of the student voice, uh, the student representation that the model brought into the um, uh, into the into the project, and also they just say you know they thought that involving the students as partners in the project it, it brought the authentic student voice in each and every project activity that we are doing. Because you see, even in the webinars, um, uh, students were being involved in presentation, in workshops, students were being involved. Even right now, even in research, as a student, I am the one who is making this presentation. And we are making this presentation, the three of us, myself, Sinead, and, uh, Sinead myself, and, um, and, 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 and Kathy. That shows how uh, um, you know key it is. Like when you bring students, you can hear directly from their voices rather than hearing from a third party. Then just also involving students um, um, and working directly with students brought some sort of a um, different perspective that will have never been captured by staff because most of the staff admitted that they were actually students like long time ago and the current student might be experiencing different uh, issues compared to a student maybe who was enrolled like maybe three years ago before the pandemic and you know so and just having a student brought some sort of convenience like you know you have somebody to help you and you're partnering with directly without going through the complicated structure of the student union which is like the most common available option for student staff uh, partnership so as you can see from the verbatim course so these are three different staff just talking sharing 
about the experiences. And there's one staff was who said like, you know, I delivered a workshop in collaboration with one of our interns. And I've done that workshop many times over the years. But when I delivered it in conjunction with the student, it was completely different for the better because she was able to bring much more of a nuanced perspective to the workshop. So just the different perspective that students bring to the project. An involving student has really brought the authentic student voice to the project activities and has helped us to shape the project. So that is a member of staff, uh, you know, uh, uh, saying. And uh, the, the, the last quote there, uh, the staff aren't getting inside, uh, inside a real insight into how students are experiencing things. And to be completely honest, sometimes when the students came together and discussed those experiences and allowed us to get that insight, to hear them speaking, to talk about the impact that was um, that was having on them, uh, you know, it, it brought a different perspective. So, sorry for the typo. So just for us as students sharing with staff what we're experiencing, especially during the pandemic, some of us like me, I, I'm a student of a you know, of the pandemic, because I started my PhD during the pandemic. So the challenges that I was facing, you know, the kind of needs that we had as students at that time were just totally different from what maybe the students um, of, you know, pre-pandemic were having. So it was important that 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 that, that you hear from, you know, uh, students. So then the overall from this presentation, from the experiences of the, you know, the students and the interns, we asked, like, what would be the recommendation of, you know, student staff uh, partnership, what, you know, what could the students recommend? And this is what came up. So, so number one, we found that there was a, there's a need for a structured model for involving students as partners in teaching and learning, um, other than the student union, you see, just to explain the how and the what, like the model that this, you know, the, the this, this, the structure that this kind of internship, like our internship had, like, you know, because the student union is a very complicated um, uh, uh, body where, you know, all these staff are trying to collaborate with students through the student union. But in this case, we had a member of staff working with a student uh, dedicated to them. Then it is very important also to compensate us students when you are involving us, you know, uh, to cater for the time that we spend collaborating with staff. Because, you know, like some of us, we are not only students, but we are also in, engaging in some part-time jobs. So when we come to engage, you know, to actively engage those 15 hours per week, those 20 hours per week, we are giving our time that otherwise we could be doing other things out there or even just, you know, so it's important to compensate and recognize students' effort by paying them. That's what we did in the project, paying the students the 13.91 euro per hour. Then training for both student and staff is important to highlight possible areas of student staff because some of us did not know about areas of student staff partnership within our university until we joined this project. So there are lots of other opportunities for student staff uh, collaboration that students are not aware of or staff are not aware of. So there's need for uh, you know, sensitization and the training and education. And also there's always that fear of uh, reprimanding, you know, like we feel like, you know, when you give a, your opinion, maybe you might be punished somehow, you might be penalized. So it's important to sensitize students uh, on ways and avenues of giving feedback without fearing uh, um, uh, uh, the fear of being reprimanded. And just looking at my own experience and the experiences of the other like four international, the three international students, you know, the gender uh, diversity that was there, the kind of a level of education diversity that was there. So it's actually very important to have a diverse and inclusive, uh, be as diverse and as in, uh, and inclusive as possible, just trying to involve different types of students because different students come with different needs. You see, like in, an international student just moving to Ireland or moving to the UK or somewhere in France to start um, a college, uh, um, uh, you know, they come with different needs when it comes to you know what the, what they what they need so in teaching and learning you need to factor in the voices of such kind of students you know uh, um, uh, undergraduate students might have different needs from postgraduate students myself as a phd P phd is a very lonely journey like you might not have networks as compared to undergraduate students then also and lastly but not least uh, last but not least is um, a, a, always involve those students who are currently enrolled because there are some internship models where students are hired post their um, a, a, a graduation or their study period 
then that sometimes you do not capture that real time experience because you see a case study of the pandemic, a student who was a student in 2019 faced totally different challenges or had to a total different experience from a student who started uh, in 2020 during the pandemic, like myself and many others. And, you know, just to conclude that uh, kudos to all the students who started during the pandemic and they are still um, uh, studying today. So thank you very much um, for uh, taking your time to listen. Uh, in case you have any questions or any um, uh, comments, you can just um, uh, 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 DM me on Twitter at uh, FK Ongoli and uh, send an email to me fernando.ongoli at iua.ie. Thank you.